Welcome to the Gilbert Gonzalez Group, purveyor of food at the proper time. Food for thought. And the SSS, the Spiritual Snitching Society. We're a new type of society. We do everything in the open. expressed by our guests are not the opinions of any elder body or Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, but they should be. Any similarities to any deceased governing body member is purely coincidental. What you're about to experience is an honest debate forum of maturely trained and seasoned Christians. Do not attempt this at home. Welcome back to the Gilbert Gonzalez Group, to another special edition where we have three extra Jehovah's Witnesses and two current Jehovah's Witnesses as guests, where we will be discussing topics of interest to of Jehovah's Witnesses, current and former. Now, let's get started. First, we have a lady whom everybody would be honored to have as her friend, our friend Becca, or Cuckoo for the Truth. Thank you, Becca, for coming. Our brother, who recently has suffered collateral damage from Watchtower's henchmen, he goes by his street name, Jack Black, Mr. Jack Foley. And our sister with a brain. Yes, a life coach. Yes, her brain scares the likes of Samuel Hurd of the governing body. Yes, the lovely... Sylvian Nukio. Please visit her webpage, sylviannukio.com. Welcome. Now let's get started. <clears throat> let's go with question one. Watchtower says no to politics. However, they teach global warming. They say nothing about radical Islam. They are anti gun and anti Second Amendment. Members of the UN, NGO, etc., etc. Are the leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses progressive leftists, socialists, or just plain stupid? Uh, let's start with Becca. Hi, Gilbert. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, I think the Watchtower does a really good job in keeping you out of politics. Um, I don't know that much about politics, thanks in part to Watchtower. Um, honestly, I really didn't think that I would need to be on the political scene, so I didn't really worry about that. Um, so it is a lot to, to kind of figure out, but I think what the, the main thing that Watchtower wants to do is to have you um, fearful, to create a, an atmosphere of fear. Um, and worry and then what they want to do is they want to tie your hands so that you um, have a sense of dependency on them and to give you a feeling of helplessness and they don't want you to participate they don't want you to feel like to have any kind of empowerment or feel like you can make a difference or an impact um, so they want to promote that helplessness so that in turn you rely on them. Um, it's all about fear and becoming reliant on the organization for all of your answers to all of your problems. And the political arena is no different than that. It's, it's fear and come to us and we'll take care of you. Um, so I think that's what that's, you know, that's the whole reason for that. And I think they do a really good job at keeping people um, in the dark and feeling helpless, you know, all at the same time. Atmosphere of fear, great point. Now let's go to Jack. Hi everybody. Thank you Gilbert for having me on the show. Um, it's an honor and I feel that I can die now. So it's a wonderful privilege to be a part of this. Um, I would say that the leadership, the governing body, their helpers, uh, they're very disconnected from reality. And this is something that I ranted about while I was even in the organization because to me, they don't live in a real world. 
they live in a dream world. You know, they live within 10 square miles of the area uh, that they reside at. Uh, they don't sit in traffic. Uh, they don't work. Uh, they're not raising families. So I feel they're very disconnected uh, from what's happening in the world around them. And so as far as their policies on not being part of the world, not being involved with politics, well, they can't allow that, Gilbert, uh, because then they're relinquishing control of the minds of those that are members of the organization. And so I believe they're very aware of what they're doing and that um, it's a way of maintaining control on their part. Isn't it true? It's always about control. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to Sylvianne. Hi, everyone. Hi, Gilbert. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Very excited to be here. Uh, it's a very cool show, so I'll try my best to answer your questions. Question number one. Well, I'm not sure if they are progressive leftists or if they are stupid, but what I think is that they sure hope that everybody else will be stupid enough to believe what they want us to believe. For example, well, on one hand, we know that they are no part of the world, right? And on the other hand, they are doing things that are very questionable. For example, they have their tax records, and we know tax records are public. And if you look, you'll see that on some of their public tax records, they have invested since 2002 uh, stocks, thousands and thousands of dollars, maybe millions, in, in the stock market, they are investing in companies that are very much from this world. Some of them making guns, making war machines. So that alone tells you a lot. Then the global warming. Well, global warming, they love it because it fits one of their beliefs, which is that mankind can fix it or can't seem to be able to fix it, but God will fix it in its own due time. Now, as far as radical Islam, I think they don't really want to get involved with that, maybe out of fear, and also maybe because it reminds their own radical thinking. Now, when it comes to a gun, again, guns, as I just mentioned, they are investing in companies that do make guns. But anyway, I do remember when I was a Jehovah's Witness, that they would tell you that, you know, it would be better if someone came with a gun in your house trying to kill you. It would be better to be killed than to try to defend yourself with a gun. So, yes, on one hand, they are very against gun, right? And on the other hand, they invest stock in companies that make guns. Very interesting. As far as the UN, wow, wow, wow. Well, I was in the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses when they were involved, when they were members of the UN, and I never, never knew that. I never heard about anyone saying anything about the Watchtower being involved with the UN. So that tells a lot. So I don't know if they are stupid or if they are progressive leftists, but I, I am sure that they are very cunning and they try to make us believe things very different from the truth. You know, it does make you think, doesn't it? Now, folks, our next guest is Matthew Mark. And he's begging to come back on the show. And I said no to him. But he sends me an email every day just begging for me to, for, to be back on the show. So I said, okay, you can only answer one time. Matthew Mark is a Jehovah's Witness elder in the Phoenix area, and he, and he has decided uh, to stay as an elder to help as many people get out. So I can't blow his cover, but he desperately wants to be an active apostate. But he finds that he can do more work inside the Kingdom Hall. So, okay, Matthew Mark, what say you? I invented the Internet. Remember those words? spoken by a true American politician, leader, and some might say a left-leaning ideologue. JW.org lives by the internet, the world wide web. Their symbol is almost an image of the UN symbol. The backdrop and colors are identical. 
If Jesus died on a stake, why can't the stake be our symbol or the wine glass and bread? No, we are a worldly organization dressed as a Christian religion. A modern day translation for a wolf in sheep's clothing. We are the most political bastardization of a Christian church today. UN NGO membership? My God, Jehovah, forgive us, for we do not know what Watchtower does. The teachings of Christian neutrality is nothing more than the handicapping a nation's struggle towards freedom. No, JW.org is not a Christian organization. It is a petri dish religious experiment of a corrupt progressive socialist agenda. Thank you, Matthew Mark. Now, please go back to your literature card, okay? Now, question two. My plastic microphone brought out a very good point. You have 40, 50, 60 year old men, accomplished men, passing out microphones and who still do not qualify to be elders. Now, are we in high school? Why is there so much emphasis on the word qualify and what does qualify really mean? Let's go, Becca. Qualify usually means we, that you have a certain skill set in order to, to do a job that needs to be done. I think with um, elders, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're qualified. I think it just means that you are in line because your numbers are right or you know certain circumstances or that they're just desperate for for an elder <laughs> in some congregations where they you know they need elders they'll you know it's just out of desperation that they'll choose a particular um, brother but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the skill set um, you would think that being an elder would mean that you would be an older man who who has life experience you know who's You've seen a lot of things and been a lot aware, you know, been a lot of places, has compassion for, for people in different uh, situations that they may find themselves in. To, to lead the congregation, you would have to be a people person, but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, I think a lot of times it's just a matter of, you know, who looks best on paper, <laughs> frankly. You know, who, who, who has the family that you know, that they go to the meetings with who don't miss, who get their time out in service, and, you know, and that's that's the one that's going to be an elder, more than likely someone who's just, uh, you know, an older man who's who's kind and loving and uh, approachable. You know, I don't necessarily think that these are the qualities that are always met when they're choosing elders. Uh, fortunately for me, just being female, you know, I don't qualify for that. And I'm really glad because what a burden that is um, to, you know, to put on people to uh, to be a taskmaster and to ride the backs of the organization, you know, the people within the organization, in the congregation. So, uh, but, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean older, um, experienced gentlemen. That, you know who are in a position uh, to lead so that's what I know about elders so make of it what you will I agree you're right on all the points uh, let's go to Jack I love this topic about um, qualifying for service um, self-appointing groups um, I believe that the word qualify the way they use it basically means that they decide who gets to be an elder or a servant and they'll run you into the ground. They'll work you into the ground with assignments and so forth, but they will not appoint you if you don't get along uh, to go along. And so to me, that word qualify means that, do we like you? You know, will, will you kiss our butt? Will you do what we say? Um, if you're the kind of person that has a personality uh, where you think for yourself and you evaluate things, they'll never appoint you because they don't want you in there. They don't want to be questioned. They don't want any decisions that come down from the governing body to be questioned. So it's another control mechanism, in my opinion, using the word um, 
qualify or qualifying for privileges. So I believe it's a it's a good old boys club that is basically helps them to maintain control by using the word qualify. Good old boys club. That is so true. Now let's go to Sylvian. Well, frankly, I am not 100% sure about that. But I think, first of all, that any of us, any ex-JWs or present Jehovah's Witnesses, have seen elders that don't seem to be quite qualified to be elders, yet they were or they are elders. But to me, what would qualify an elder for them to be perfectly qualified to be an elder would be someone that is perfectly indoctrinated. If they are, if they are totally indoctrinated, that nothing from the outside comes through them, for them, that's probably the perfect type of brother to be an elder. That's my take on that. Perfectly indoctrinated. Wow. What two words can say? Perfectly indoctrinated. Thank you, Sylvian. Oh, we have a special guest, Jeffrey Jackson of the Governing Body. What say you, Jeffrey? I'll tell you, JW Christ is what it means. Qualify means to be eligible for, to meet the requirements for, to be entitled to, to be permitted, to be counted, to be considered, to be designated, to be eligible, to be certified, to be licensed, to pass, to make the grade, succeed, to pass muster, to be allowed to be permitted, to be licensed, to be equipped, to be prepared, to be trained and be educated, to teach and be teachable, to modify, to limit, restrict, make conditional, to moderate, to temper, and to modulate and to mitigate. And that is our responsibility as governing body members. That's the responsibility we have. We have to keep Jehovah's House clean by setting standards and enforcing them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Now, question three. Teenagers, they must be loving and respecting of their parents. Their good mental health and future depend on it. What do you say to the teenager who ignored the rated R sign at the beginning of this show and others? What do you say to the JW teenager who loves his parents but is held hostage by the local elders and watchtower? Let's start with Becca. If you go see a rated R movie, your life is not going to shatter into a million pieces. I don't care what anybody tells you. You're going to be okay. You're a teenager, you want to go out, you want to experience things, you want to have fun, that's all good. It's, you know, it's what teenagers do. It's going to be okay, so everybody just calm down over the rated R movies. It's ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> if you are a teenager within the organization, unfortunately, you are going to have to be the mature one. You are going to have to take charge of your education. If you can, I would suggest that you try to get into some sort of higher education program, whatever that might be, um, which may be an uphill battle for you. Um, you know, of course, there's that pressure to try to get you out in the ministry, um, to try to get you into a job as soon as possible, but really fight for your education. It's the best thing for you. It's the best thing to set up your future. Um, so I would do that. I would plan, I would put money aside, I would save if you can, so that you can leave whenever you, you know, need to. Um, whatever you do, stay out of that dunk tank. That is important because that is the beginning of the end for you. Um, once you do that, you know, they, they've got you and they're going to put all kinds of demands on your back. And suddenly your life is no longer your own. Uh, you, you've, you've handed it over to them. You know, and, and that might be hard because they're really getting hard on teenagers with, you know, the new blackmail policies that they have. For youngsters, they want to, you know, hold your driver's license if you don't 
get baptized. Um, so they're, they're really applying some really serious pressure on young ones to get baptized. And the ages are getting younger and younger and younger. So I'm going to tell you to stay out of that. Um, stand your ground because that is a decision that you make when you are ready and no one can force or should force or try to pressure you into doing something that you are not ready to do. So I'm going to say hold your ground and plan for your future. And your ground. Excellent advice. Now, Jack. Another rock solid topic, uh, teenagers and uh, the turmoils and the struggles that they deal with in the organization. Um, if I could surmise this in one word, I would say to help them, you have to humanize the brothers. And Kyla's and I experienced in the organization, we had all kinds of people over our homes. We did dinners, a lunch, Super Bowl parties. And I found that when the teenagers got to know me, they saw me drink a beer. They saw me yell at my wife for my kids. And they understood that even though I was a spiritual man that loved my family, they realized I was just human. I was like everybody else. And so helping teenagers that are struggling in the organization that may be scared or fearful of um, the things that are done by the elders, we have to get them to see that these elders are just human beings you know, like you and me trying to make it. Uh, for the most part, I believe they're doing the best they can, but they're just people. Uh, they didn't come down out of heaven. They didn't receive some divine assignment from God. They're people that are part of a religion that are doing the best they can. And so if you can spend time mentoring a teenager and they can get to know you and know that you're a real person, you can help them in their struggle. Uh, you can help them to know that there's hope and that it's okay if they decide that they want to leave the organization. So, so in one word, humanize the elders and that will uh, get them to break free from the fear they have of the organization. Humanizer Brothers, so true. Uh, Sylvian. Very interesting question here. Well, when it comes to R-rated material, every time I hear about R-rated material, the first thing that comes to mind, it's the Bible itself. The Bible got, it's got them all, okay? It's got violence, it's got murder, it's got genocide, it's got adultery, it's got betrayal, it's got incest, and it's got sex. The Bible has it all. Even in today's world, 2016, the Bible is the most R-rated book you could ever read. However, this said, I would not suggest a teenager to go see a R movie just for the, you know, for the fun of it, just to go see violence or negative stuff because it's bad for you. Not for the Watchtower, but really going to see an R movie because it's very violent. If it's very violent, it's not healthy. Frankly, as a coach, I would never advise not only a teenager, but an adult, anyone to go see violence, for example. So that's the first thing I would say. Now, when it comes to seeing an R-rated movie and the movie is R-rated because it's got two bad words in it or a love scene, maybe. <laughs> not a big deal, you know. I would not make a big deal out of that at all. This is not something that would be bad for you. And it's just R-rated because they have to, you know, put that R-rated stuff on it because it's got those two bad words or it's got, you know, this this man and woman, some, you know, in, in some bed at some point. But that's not a big deal. Now, when it comes to give advice to a teenager that feels stuck between their parents' belief and the watchtower, well, if they have listening parents, I would advise them to try to speak to them, to try to voice their concern. A very good way to voice your concern to your parents would be maybe asking them questions so you can bring in your concern. Jehovah's Witnesses are very good at that. That's what they do at the door when they go preach to people. They ask questions so the 
person in front of them can answer the question and then they can come in with their own beliefs and stuff. You can do the same thing with your parents. But whatever you do, you need to do it in a calm manner because if you do it in a rebellious manner, that's not going to work. For example, a brother who was waking up from the watchtower indoctrination and wanted his wife to wake up as well, what he did with his wife is, you know, he would have her read a Bible verse and tell her, what do you think? What do you think about this Bible verse? But really, what do you think with your own thinking ability, not what the watchtower tells you to think? And it worked for him. It really worked for him and his wife. She woke up as he woke up because she reacted to the Bible uh, verse the same way he reacted to it when they were not thinking about watchtower thinking. So the last thing I would want to say is it's maybe not easy, but your life is yours to live. You are not going to live the life of your parents and you're certainly not going to live the life of the Watchtower organization. So I would advise any teenager uh, who doesn't feel comfortable to voice it and not to be scared. You know, fear will stop you uh, before you even start. So try to not be fearful. Try to express your concern in a calm manner and, uh, you know, uh, maybe little by little, you'll be able to get out of this organization, even if your parents don't agree, you know, at least you would not get baptized and get into the trouble that getting baptized and then going out of the organization would bring to you. That was a great answer. Let's go on to question four. Depression runs high among Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. I believe it is partly because of success. That's my opinion. With Watchtower, you give and you give and you give, but the results are not commensurate with the effort put in, especially since you have the truth and you're God's organization here on earth. So what are your thoughts on depression? Uh, Becca. It is rampant within the organization. You are always having more and more loaded upon your back. The bar is always being raised higher and higher and higher. I mean, if you have four kids and you went out 20 hours in service, you're going to hear an example of a woman with 10 kids who's missing a leg and missing an eye and did twice as much as you did. The bar is always being raised on you. You're never going to be good enough. You're never going to give enough. And you have nothing left over for yourself. Uh, it's, it's an organization that robs you of joy. Um, so, yeah, depression is rampant. Uh, even, with, uh, even outside the organization, I mean, the, the time, the years, the decades that's been stolen from people... Uh, the families that have been you know, torn apart over this organization, I mean, depression is huge. You have no self-worth within the organization. They're always burdening you down. Your life is not your own. I mean, what's to be happy about? And then on top of all of that, you're serving the happy God. You're supposed to be labeled as one of the happiest people. <laughs> so, so you can't even voice, you know, what you're feeling, your feelings are, are you know, have to be buried. Uh, you, you can't even express, you know, how unhappy or depressed that you might be. You, you're not encouraged to go seek help for any kind of depression that you may have. You know, if you have a chemical imbalance, well, sh you know. <laughs> depression is huge within inside and outside the organization. They really create a lot of hardship for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, just from personal experience, I can tell you that I was extremely depressed within the organization. And I feel much, much better since I left. You're right. It is never enough. I personally call them an ungrateful society. Uh, Jack, what do you say? Well, I hate to say this, Gilbert, but the Watchtower kind of got this one right. Um, it's been said over and over again from the stage, especially when I was in the organization, that depression is not a spiritual problem. 
It's a physical one. And they're right. I mean, someone that's dealing with depression, that's down, uh, that has low self-esteem, a lot of those things have to do with somebody's upbringing, uh, their environment, um, the mental disposition that's kind of been put into them over the years by the organization, uh, by their friends. And so it's something that on a world scale, people have to deal with depression. And I think the enigma with it in the organization is that we're God's people. You know, we have the truth. We shouldn't be depressed. But like anything else in life, it's a part of being human. It's a part of being a person with real feelings. You're going to deal with depression. And so it has nothing to do with religion. I don't think it has particularly anything more to do with being a JW or a Catholic or a Protestant. You're going to deal with depression. Now, one of the aspects of your question that you asked talked about constantly chasing your tail and privileges and trying to measure up. And I will say this, that it can beat you down. Trying to measure up as a witness and qualify for this privilege and chase that privilege can, you can almost implode. It can just become too much for you to handle. So I'll say that it may be more prevalent in the J-Dub religion because there's so much that you're chasing. But for the most part, it's a human problem. Uh, depression has nothing to do with spirituality. It just has to do to me with your environment and your mental dispositions. And what an environment the Jehovah's Witness community is. You're right, Jack. Uh, Sylvianne, uh, go ahead. Ah, uh, the question about depression. <laughs> now, eight of my 10 years of being a Jehovah's Witness, I was depressed. But I knew it wasn't clinical depression, as one elder suggested to me. I knew it was coming from my environment, but I didn't know exactly why and exactly where it came from. Why on earth was I so depressed? Well, I know now why I was so depressed, but back then I didn't. Now, 10 years later, having studied psychology and having become a coach, I can tell you that when you keep on telling someone that they are no good, they're not good enough, that they can't run fast enough or jump high enough, and that no matter what they do, they are good for nothing people, they are going to be depressed, believe me. And another very, very important thing that I know to be a source of depression for many people but much more to Jehovah's Witnesses because the teaching teaches them this very thing, is when you teach people that your life will start in the future, but right now in the moment you have no life, this is the perfect recipe for depression. You could ask any personal development professionals, and I know many, and actually, I've asked many that question. Ask any personal development people if it's healthy to teach people that their life will start somewhere in the future, but that right now they have to go through hell, basically. They will tell you that this is a very, very good recipe for catastrophe when it comes to depression. Because the very fact that you can't live in the moment, it's a source of depression. Because in order to heal that depression, as a matter of fact, what we teach to our clients as coaches is to learn to live in the moment. But when you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you can't do that. You can't live in the moment. Right now, you have to go in service. You have to do this. You have to do that. And you live later you know, in paradise earth. So that is a big, big recipe for depression. So what the watch, Watchtower teaches is the exact opposite of what would make someone healthy without depression. You see, you see, folks, that is exactly why I invited Sylvia to the show. Folks, please, please visit and subscribe to her channel and, and go to her webpage. Thank you very much, Sylvianne. Let's go on to uh, uh, question five. Pedophile debacle should be a slam dunk, right? 
Why is it not resonating as much as people would like to see? Uh, let's go with Becca. Well, I'm hoping that with the Candace Conte uh, verdict that there just hasn't been enough time yet. I'm hoping that there are more cases coming forward um, every day. I think that now that um, the walls of watchtowers have been penetrated by that verdict, I think it's just a matter of time before um, it really starts to come a little bit m more to people's attentions, um, even with inside the organization. I think eventually it will become known. Um, maybe I'm just a little optimistic on that, but you know, I really do think that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, it's coming forth. And with, you know, JW Org on their broadcasts um, asking for money and money's going out and not enough's coming in, you know, I think that this may be a result of these lawsuits and and uh, so maybe we will see a change in that sometime soon I really hope so so um, you know other than the two witness rule um, people are outraged by it who are outside the organization who find out about that so I think that we're on the right track and I think as Time goes on a little bit more, we'll start to see the results of that and uh, hopefully make an impact on the, on the organization. So. Yeah, you're right. Money will definitely shake things up. Uh, Jack. Um, Gilbert, I want to personally thank you for asking this question because this is one that is very dear to my heart. It just enrages me um, even thinking about this topic uh, but you asked that of the child abuse situation and why it hasn't caught on why there's not more support for it why more people aren't been out of shape about it and I was talking to a couple of friends about this today and I have to say that um, I think it has to do with how controlled the information is by the governing body um, when I was waking up and asking about child abuse procedures and how they're handled and are you aware of this, are you aware of that, you know what my common experience was when talking to my friends that were regular publishers? They just didn't know. They just weren't aware of it. If it wasn't something that they dealt with or were personally connected to, if it wasn't them or their kid, they just didn't know. And I think that that's the main um, tool that's used by the governing body is that you can't look at anything that's dissenting or negative that comes from a secular source about the organization and you're not provided information regarding child abuse. So uh, even though it is a slam dunk and the two witness rule has been debunked, they've been able to establish that circumstances can serve as a witness to that crime. It's not catching on because many don't know. Um, I've tried to talk to those that um, are still close to me that will talk to me about the Australian Royal Commission. And I've told them, guys, look, it's just like news. Watch it. It's like watching Judge Judy or, or anything else. Watch this commission and come to your own conclusions. But that's the kicker. It's so hard to get them to watch something um, that um, shows the organization in a negative light. So the reason it has not caught on is not because witnesses don't care. But the information that's given to them through the governing body, through the publications, it's so highly controlled that they just don't have the access to these things. And most of them are not going to look at it. If you're going to get a witness to look at something regarding child abuse, you've got to kind of like put it in their face to get them to consider it. So I think it's about access to information. And the more access that we as um, former witnesses can get to those that are in the organization, the more you're going to start um, having people realize what's really going on. Thank you, Gilbert. You're right. That is why we're doing these videos. It is having an effect. You're right. Uh, Sylvianne. I think that as Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, is that they do not feel that the pedophilia cases are that many 
you know, they probably feel that it's blown out, uh, out of proportion, uh, that, you know, they do not know any cases close by uh, of pedophilia. They've never been in a congregation where they heard about pedophilia cases. I know I, I never heard of pedophilia cases as far as I'm concerned. You know, I don't think there were any such cases in the congregation yet. I know now that even if they were, I probably would have never heard of it. So I don't think they can visualize correctly this concept. You know, they feel that it's, you know, it's not really true because they have never experienced it to be true themselves. And another thing I think is that they believe that the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses has their best interest at heart. They do not believe that the organization, the Watchtower, has its best interest at heart. And that's another thing, you know, that someone that's being indoctrinated cannot realize. They, they really think that the Society of Jehovah's Witnesses has the interest of the little publisher at heart when we know the real interest that they have is their own. So true. <clears throat> now, have you sent in your early voting ballot to headquarters? And is it too much to ask for ex Jehovah's Witnesses to send four ballots to the four addresses listed below? Let's go with Becca. And just to add, if you go on jw.org and in the search bar type in voting, it will, one of the ar articles that pops up is from the book that is um, keep yourself in God's love and down at the bottom of this article it says that uh, how Christians do not try to interfere with elections and respect the rights to vote of others and it in the last little blurb there it says that a Christian may go to the voting polls or booth uh, if their conscience permits and so in really tiny, tiny little blurb, they say, well, you can if you want to. However, we all know that Jehovah's Witnesses don't vote. So it's one of those you can, but don't. And that's, that's on JW.org. Look it up. Okay. Uh, Sylvia Ann. I'm not sure about that question. I don't think I have yet. I am not sure. You tell me. My very first vote is going to be for GG for GB. Well, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did producing it. I want to stop here and read you a clip that Becca wrote to me uh, weeks ago. She says, in, quote, in part, I struggled with social anxiety and couldn't even join the ministry school or comment during the Watchtower study which made me feel even more inferior. It was that bad. Now I'm making videos, which I attribute to God's grace in freeing me from this organization. And she mentions others. You know what, God bless you, Becca. And you know you, you, you are a great, fine example to all of us and you're doing great work and we're all very, very proud of you. And hopefully you'll inspire other people and other women to do the same thing, to pick up their mantles and let their light shine like you're doing like you did here today and you do in your channel. And please visit our friend soon, our friend and soon to be coach Sylvianukio.com. And last but certainly not least, our brother Black Jack, who has recently had a run in with some Gestapo type elders. If you would like to be on the show, or would you or perhaps you would like to pass out microphones, please email me at Gilbert at jwcrisis.org. Join us next week as we discuss topics such as why do Jehovah's Witnesses hate America so much? And why does, we'll open up this envelope, why does Watchtower buy tens of thousands of dollars of medicine like AZT and Combevere? I don't know. Now, what about this question? Oral sex is a disfellowshipping offense. But elders performing Operation Ass Kiss, 
on the circuit overseer. Is that grounds for reproof? And now, before we finish, let's go and read our accounts report. Okay, I just want to go over the accounts with the Kingdom Hall of Happy Apostates. We have uh, monthly income, 355, along with piñata sales, which I'll talk to you guys about pretty soon. We have 125. Additional income, which you'll see in my next videos about the PVP and WT, along with the voting ballots. Um, <clears throat> our monthly expenses, we pay $144 for a lease to be in the, our studios. Since we believe in Jesus Christ, we pay our taxes. Beer, $19.14. The internet, $50. Office supplies, $127. The circuit overseer expense, JT's last visit, was $19.14. Now, on a very serious note, we got planned expenses. I, I, I plan to have about $1,330 due by the month of May. The convention surprise is going to cost me $650. So I'm really going to need your help on this one because uh, it's going to be money well spent along uh, with our blood drive, our piñata supplies. Uh, we'll be going over what planned expense for currency and body balance are in the next GGG group. That's it for the, uh, the reports for the Kingdom Hall of Happy Apostates. Please bear with us as we close with this special announcement. Anthony Morris III is no longer a member of the body of Christ. His crimes against the flock have reached the heavens. May God have mercy on his soul. May those with ears listen. See you next week on the Gilbert Gonzalez Group. And oh, don't, remember, don't forget, don't forget to vote. Gilbert Gonzalez Group, purveyors of food in the proper time. Food for fun. We would like to thank Goodwill and the Salvation Army for providing Gilbert's wardrobe and Jeffrey Jackson for his cameo appearance. If you would like to be on the Gilbert Gonzalez group and voice your opinion about the trending topics of the Jehovah's Witness world, you can reach us via our YouTube channel, JW Crisis. That is so fake to me.